My name is Dr. Christoph Schankin. I'm head of the University Headache Clinic at the Department of Neurology, University Hospital Bern, Inselspital. On behalf of my co-authors, I'm delighted to present our paper on the structural and functional footprint of visual snow syndrome. Patients with visual snow syndrome suffer from visual snow. That means a continuously flickering tiny dots in the entire visual field resembling the view of a badly tuned analog television. Further, they have additional visual symptoms, that means palinopsia, enhanced entoptic phenomena such as floaters, photophobia and impaired night vision. Patients also have non-visual perceptional symptoms such as tinnitus. And in addition, they complain of non-perceptional problems, particular irritability tiredness and concentration problems. The aim of the study was to improve our understanding of visual snow syndrome by characterizing the brain on a structural and functional level. Further, we aimed at correlating this imaging footprint to individual clinical symptoms. For this, we included 20 patients with visual snow syndrome and 20 age and gender matched controls. Structure was assessed using voxel-based morphometry. Functional assessment was done using FDG-PET. To the results, we found increased metabolism in the right lingual gyrus and guided by our PET results, we applied small volume correction of voxel-based morphometry we found a corresponding increase in gray matter volume. This is important since it underscores our clinical impression that the visual association cortex around the right lingual gyrus is important for the visual symptoms of visual snow syndrome. Further, we found decreased metabolism in the inferior parietal lobe on the right side, which is typically associated with palinopsia. In addition, we had alterations in structure and function in several areas of the temporal lobe, the limbic system and the parietal lobe. For instance, the inferior parietal lobule and the superior temporal gyrus are often associated with tinnitus. Alterations in the limbic system and in the temporal lobe could well explain that patients also have non-perceptional symptoms such as concentration problems, irritability and tiredness. We think that our results are important for several reasons. First, we have demonstrated involvement of multiple brain areas in visual snow syndrome. Second, these areas might explain individual symptoms of visual snow syndrome. Third, for the visual symptoms, the visual association cortex seems to be of particular relevance. And fourth, involvement of the limbic system and the temporal lobes might explain the non-perceptional symptoms patients are suffering from, namely concentration problems, irritability and tiredness, and these symptoms therefore should not be mistaken for psychogenic or malingering. 